Welcome my friends, I have something very exciting for you over here and I've been waiting for this motherboard whew, probably about six months. This is the Gigabyte Z690 Aero D. It's like the flagship creator motherboard from Gigabyte and probably the biggest competitor to the Asus Z690 Pro Art. This one over here. So depending which kind of aesthetic you're gonna go for, like this black and gold or kind of whitish, either one of these are gonna be very, very good for you. But we have a dedicated review of this on the channel. But now let's have a look at this motherboard then. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out Hookies through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out Hookies.com in the video description below. Okay, this is the actual first time I'm opening this as well. By the way, there is a difference between Aero D and Aero G. I have the Aero G motherboard over here, which is probably one of the best DDR4 creator motherboards for the creators. But this now here is DDR5. So then, let's take this on the side. Underneath we have installation guide. We have the user manual, which is very, very helpful. In terms of the cables, temperature prone, temperature prone, two SATA cables, two SATA cables, two SATA cables, so six altogether. That's quite a lot. We have a 12 volt uh, RGB connector uh, extension. Then on the left side, we have the Wi Fi and Bluetooth antenna. We have a good few screws for the M.2s. We have a microphone. The Gigabyte board, some of them have like this option where you can have a microphone inside your PC case and then that measures like the kind of noise it makes and you can configure your fans according to the noise and so on. And then we have the Gigabyte G connector, which is very helpful for the front panel headers. You can put them all in the connector and then slot it all in to the motherboard. One of the first things you're gonna notice about this motherboard is that the design is absolutely beautiful. I really, really like motherboards with this type of design. Now I would love to see some more kind of covers on the motherboard to make it even more covered and less of like, you know, little knobs and capacitors and all sorts of things on the motherboard. It would be even nicer if it was all covered, but this is one of the best white creator boards that are out there. You can see creator series here. It's kind of like this a matte white type of finish. So it's not like a glossy, as you can see, this over here is not glossy at all. And this over here is the same. It kind of fades into, uh, I don't know if, if it's class or some kind of cover, like a matte fade onto this Z690 Creator series. Now I did like the Vision name more than Aero, but because they have like Aero Creator, like laptop series, then they're doing that now on the like PC side as well. Creativity starts here. We have a massive, massive uh, first heatsink cover for the top uh, and the two over there. As you can see, there's like a heatsink that kind of comes above here. We're going to look at that in a moment. We have direct touch heat pipe design on these VRMs in here. And then actually this gigabyte section over here is leather. There's like a, like a little leather slot on the top here as well. It's pretty cool. I wish there was a cover to cover like these CPU or EPS power connectors here as, as well as we had on the previous kind of vision uh, motherboards there, but I think it still looks very, very good. It does fit into the silver theme as well. So if you have something silver, it will fit in there as well. But let's have a look at some of the connectors there. In terms of the power connectors, we have eight plus four for the CPU, 24 pin for the motherboard and all sorts of things, and then nothing else. So it doesn't need, require any other like supplementary power for any other um, connectors. It does have four DDR5 slots in here and they support up to 128 gigabytes, which I haven't seen anyone used so far. DDR5, there's not a single build out there yet with 128 gigabytes, but it does support that. Obviously, this is the Intel uh, LGA1700 socket for the 12th gen and most likely the 13th gen as well that's coming out very, very soon. Moving on to fan and CPU headers. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight headers here for the CPUs and pumps and so on. All of them are a two amperes and 24 watts rated. So nothing is, you know, more or less. 
all of them are exactly the same. Next of all, what we can see on the uh, top of here is the RGB headers. We have the 12 volt and 5 volt on the top over there. Then we have another 12 volt and 5 volt on the bottom over here. So you do have four RGB connectors all together to 12 volt and then to 5 volt ARGB headers. And next of all here we have a Dr. Debug, very helpful there. Those two headers just behind the ATX board there are the temperature prongs. So you can have, you know, those we show, showed you on the motherboard box, put it there and you can measure whatever, you know, part of your PC case. We have two USB type A front panel connectors and these are USB 3.2 gen 1 ports so or five gigabit ports here for the front panel. So you can have quite a bit of front panel headers if you if you need that. Then we have a front panel USB type C header and this is 20 gigabits rated in speed. So it does support USB 3.2 gen 2 X2. We have six SATA ports and there were six SATA cables uh, that came with the motherboard as well, which is very, very helpful. Then we have front panel headers on the bottom over here. We have a TPM header, but you don't need that um, in terms of the 12th gen because that's actually built into the CPU as well. We have the CMOS battery over here. There is a reset switch to prongs in here as well. So if you just short those two pins there, you can reset the PC, but there's also reset switch on the left over here. There's two switches. Left one is reset, right one is Q flash. So you can update your BIOS on the motherboard without even the CPU installed, which is very, very helpful. Then on the top, we have a CMOS clear CMOS button over there another temperature prone header over here and then moving on over here we have three USB 2.0 headers and then they are actually in a hub together as well as these USB 3.2 gen 1 headers over here they are in a, in a hub so they don't have separate controllers we have the noise controller you know the microphone that we had in the box that's where you would plug this in and then front panel audio no fancy ports I like that there is not a lot of like overclocking or water cooling features in here because it's kind of like wasted I think features for the creators who want to just you know a creator board very very nice let's have a look at the heat sinks and m.2 slots then okay so if we look at the heat sinks the bottom heat sink actually is over uh, three m.2 ssds and the third one here has only like top cover of for the um, thermal pad the other three on the top and then the other two here have underneath kind of heat sink as well so you will kind of sandwich your m.2 uh, like in between so all of these heat sinks which is very very nice but if you look at the top heat sink here that goes on the first m.2 slot there that's connected to the cpu then it's got like this big heat sink thing that comes like above or is like above it to just expand the area of the cooling uh, as you can see it's absolutely huge and massive in here i don't know how much you actually need this and how much this is necessary it sure does fit onto the design and looks very very interesting but my concern is if you have a gpu just plugged in here that has maybe memory chips on the back of the you know pcb as well for example 1390 or something like that then i'm just wondering if this heatsink will start picking up the actual heat of the the gpu as well i wouldn't know so in terms of the m.2 slots we have four m.2 slots the front first slot is connected to the cpu and this is pca gen 4 and all of these pci m.2 slots are pca gen 4 and x4 slots and the bottom three are connected to the chipset and the first one is connected to the cpu when talking about the m.2 slots there is only one switch like this bottom slot over here this m.2 when you have a nvme ssd plugged in there then you're going to lose two of the sata ports but the interesting thing is if you've got a SATA M.2 plugged in there, then you're going to have all of the SATA ports as well. It's just when you have NVMe on the bottom fourth slot, then you're going to lose four, uh, two uh, SATA ports, which I think is kind of okay trade-off, and I'm, I'm not too bothered about that. Interestingly, we do have a Wi-Fi card in there as well. In terms of the PCIe slots here, there is um, two of the white ones, or like kind of guarded ones, and they are for the GPUs. If the next-gen GPUs come out, then you can run two GPUs in here, but they will both start to run then PCIe Gen 5 X8 slot. The front slot or the top slot is X16 slot, but when you have 
something plugged into the second one, both of them become X8 slots. This bottom slot over here, even though being like the full size, is still X4 slot and this is BZA Gen 3, just if you want to have extra network cards or your, you know, whatever, something like that. And there's no switch in there. If you have anything plugged in there, you're not going to lose anything else or anything, something like that. It's all just, you know, to the chipset. So if you have like a capture card or something like that, you can plug it in there, which is fantastic, really, a good combination. I wish there was also like a way to have X16 slot of PCA Gen 4 in the top slot and still have like an X8 PCA Gen 4 as well, but it's not that. Obviously they're backwards compatible as well, so you can put PCA Gen uh, 4 in there, uh, or all of these uh, PCA Gen 5 slots here if you wanted to. Now let's have a look at the motherboard IO here. So, on the top over here, we have two Wi-Fi antennas uh, and Bluetooth antennas, which, you know, you had the antenna in the box, you can, you know, screw it in here and then just magnet the antenna anywhere on your case or anywhere you want it. We have HDMI out port. So this is if you have an iGPU inside your CPU, you can use this HDMI out to, you know, drive your monitors or whatever. There is a DP in port here. Basically, this is for the Thunderbolt and a gigabytes vision USB-C port here. So you would put like a Thunderbolt or DP port from the graphics card to your DP in here. And then you would have vision link on the top USB-C port over here. Now the weird thing is Gigabyte kind of made their own fake uh, Thunderbolt kind of um, label. It works very similar to a Thunderbolt, but it's, it's called vision link. So basically the vision link is that you can get data and graphics, you know, signal through the same USB-C port. So the top port over here is Vision Link as well as Thunderbolt 4. So if you have any devices that are compatible with the Vision Link, then they can be Thunderbolt 4 as well. So basically the top port can support Gigabyte's Vision Link and Thunderbolt 4. Now there isn't much difference there. Um, I'm not sure what the difference exactly is, but according to the specs, I can see that the only difference here is that the top port supports us this 60 watts charging but i think that should be coming from the actual thunderbolt as well but anyway the main difference between those two parts is that if you want the gigabyte vision link it's not going to come from the bottom part the bottom part is just thunderbolt 4 which to me is like just perfect and then the top port is Vision Link as well as Thunderbolt 4. Then we have some USB Type A ports. All of these red ports are 10 gigabits in speed. So USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. We have line out and microphone here. So basically audio out and audio in ports in here. So no like 5.2 audio or something like that. Neither is there optical audio port for this motherboard. So I'm not sure if you need that, but it's not in here. We have 2.5 gigabit and 10 gigabit LAN ports, and these are amazing ports. Now, that's what you really pay for this motherboard because this 10 gigabit port, just this one port over here, on its own will cost you $100. If you want it separately on like an expansion PCA card, it will cost you about $100. So to have that built in, it's absolutely fantastic. Bear in mind, this is also like 10 gigabits, 5 gigabits, 2.5 gigabits and 1 gigabit. So if you have any of those connections, it, it does support all of them because some of the workstation motherboards that I experienced recently can support, for example, 10 and 1, neither of them in between. But this 10 gigabit port can go 2.5 and 5G in between as well. This is 2.5 five gigabit port here and this can go like one gigabit as well and so on but very good uh, ethernet connecting ports here the back of the motherboard doesn't have a cover there's no ports in here nothing really to to see on the back of the motherboard and that's it really so what do i think about this motherboard i am excited about this motherboard just because it is for creators we have beautiful design we don't have the gamer bling it's kind of whitish design and it's not too bad to go black either if you want to have like a black dis design there because a lot of the motherboard is still black so it kind of fits in there but i do think if you want a white design create a motherboard or create a pc build then this is one of the best options out there without going really like a gamer theme and losing a lot of the creative features like through two thunderbolt ports and with 10 gigabit ethernet 2.5 gigabit ethernet all this built in 
um, that's fantastic to see in here. So I am digging this very, very much. In fact, this is actually cheaper than the ASUS Z690 Pro I bought. So if you do want to pick this up, I'm going to leave the link in the description below where you can go and purchase it or check the latest pricing. So let me know what you guys think about this motherboard. Do you like it? What's your thoughts? I'd love to know from you in the comment section below. Thanks guys for watching. Likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you do want to see more. If you're at this point of the video and you want to build yourself a creator PC, check out my best bank for buck creator PC build. $1,000 PC build, $1,500, now $2,000 as well, $2,500 and even $5,000 creator PCs. So if you want to check them out, I'm going to leave those in the description as well. Likes and subs and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.